Hey, hey, everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, and it is time for us to get to our next video on the French cruiser line. This is going to be, yes, the Tier 1 Bougainville class of... It's actually an aviso or a sloop, but we're not gonna we're not gonna do a traditional uh, let's play or how to play video on this because quite honestly, tier one ships we really don't need to cover a whole lot with them. You're in them for such a short time. So what I want to actually spend this video talking about, at least the battle video portion of it, is how the French cruisers play overall. Uh, I kind of briefly touched on that in the captain skills video, but we're going to go into it a little bit more in depth in this video. So let's go ahead and let's dive into the history. We'll go over both the, the ship class history as well as the service history, and then we're not even going to go over stats. We're just going to go straight into in-game play style for the French cruiser, specifically the, you know, tier five and on cruisers, because that's usually where people start you know, wondering, well, how do I really play these ships? At the lower tiers, you're not in them very long. So let's talk about the history. As I've already said, the, the Bougainville class Aviso or Sloop were ships built by the French Navy for much the same purposes of the British Black Swan class sloops. These ships were intended to serve in French colonial ports as port defense. Ten ships were planned, eight were completed, six would be lost, and three scrapped. And the last... Okay, so ship number nine would have been laid down but not finished. It was actually scuttled when the Germans invaded France, and the tenth one was never laid down. The class featured a 2,600-ton displacement and had luxurious crew accommodations that included air conditioning ample insula and ample insulation to keep the crew on board comfortable. Power was supplied to the two screws of the ship by two six-cylinder diesel engines and had an effective range of 9,000 nautical miles. These ships also carried a small float plane, which was used for reconnaissance duties, and the ships were also equipped with depth charge rails to drop a total of 16 depth charges or configured to drop mines off the rear of the ship. Now, it is interesting that the uh, float plane isn't immediately visible on this ship, but in case you're wondering, what's underneath this tarp is actually the float plane, and this wouldn't have been how they would have stored it because the float planes and their Wikipedia article specifically draws attention to this, but... What they found is that even though the wings could fold on the float plane, it was far easier to store it with the wings extended, and the, they would just cover everything with a tarp then. So this is kind of half true, I guess. I mean, this is how it was intended to be, <laughs> but the French never actually did that with them. And this did not have a catapult to launch it, so this crane derrick here would actually lift it up and put it out over the ocean, and then it would take off from the ocean. Um, in terms of service history, like a lot of French ships during World War II, as I'm coming up in my research, these ships had interesting histories because of the, the way that France fell to the Germans and the way it was occupied. You had the Vichy France, which were Vichy French, French, which were the, uh, German controlled French. And then you had the free naval, uh, free French naval forces, and the Bougainville class was really no exception to this. In fact, uh, this is one of the few French ships that actually fired upon another French ship. And that would be during the um, Battle of Gabon, which is in Africa. And basically the Bougainville, which was part of the Navy of Vichy France faced off against Savonien de Braza of the Free French Navy during that battle and was nearly sunk by de Braza, actually. Bougainville was forced to beach and later was sunk after a failed refloating operation failed to successfully patch her up. Um, de Mont de Herville and Amiral Chanier operated as part of the Navy of Vichy France and took part in the Battle of Koh Chang in Thailand during the Franco-Thai War in January of 1941. There they sunk some Japanese, or not Japanese, wow, uh, Thai uh, coastal patrol boats, and later that would obviously be resolved with uh, um, a treaty that ended that war. And La Grandière 
was modernized in 1944 with a fairly heavy anti-aircraft armament of four 40mm Bofors in single mounts and 11 20mm Orlikans in single mounts. She also had her anti-submarine armament increased to four depth charge throwers and six depth charge rails with 66 depth charges. She had sonar and radar added to her as well. Three ships survived World War II to fight in the Indochina War and the Korean War. That would be Dumont d'Urville, La Grandière, and Savonien de Braza. Uh, that's really about it for the ship service histories. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more about the, how the French cruisers play in the battle video, so let's go right to it. All right, so uh, we're not, this is not going to be an impressive battle video, I promise you. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, uh, Bougainville is quite honestly, a terrible tier one cruiser. And I'm so glad that you're not in it for very long. Uh, it only has three guns. They have a pretty slow rate of fire and absolutely horrible accuracy. And if you do hit, uh, they don't do a whole lot of damage so much so that Wargaming just buffed it today with the new patch, the 0.6.13 patch buffed its HE damage from 1,000 to 1,400, so that should help it out quite a lot. So don't expect big damage numbers or multiple kills or a Kraken or anything crazy like that. This video is more just for something to watch while I talk. So if you don't want to actually watch the video, feel free to, uh, you know, look away. We won't be discussing much about this. Okay, so where do French cruisers fit in the spectrum of other nations cruiser so at one extreme the high explosive kings are obviously going to be the japanese and the armor piercing kings are obviously going to be the royal navy cruisers with the um, germans fitting very closely to the royal navy cruisers with strong ap but while having usable but not the world's greatest high explosive you also have the americans which fit in a similar role where they have usable to Pretty decent HE, but still very strong AP, especially once you get into the higher tier cruisers that have access to the super heavy shells. Then from there, you're going to actually have the French cruisers, and they are going to be a little bit more on the HE focus side than the AP. However, the AP on these ships is actually pretty decent too, so I mean, it's not something to completely neglect. And then the you're going to have the um, Russian cruisers, which are going to be very HE focused while having eh, kind of sort of decent AP. And then you're going to have the Japanese, which have obviously the, the best HE of any cruiser in the game. And then, uh, you know, kind of so-so AP. So basically it fits on i would compare them to the japanese cruisers in terms of play style where they predominantly rely on a chi for their damage however their ap is still quite potent and it is very usable for you know any broadside target that shows up now it's not going to carry the same punching power at long ranges that the u.s cruisers do and that's just simply because of the fact that, well, they don't have the super heavy AP shell. And that's a pretty significant advantage for long range AP penetration that uh, no other nation gets aside from the U.S. Now, being as they do rely pre predominantly on HE, obviously, if you're going to be a, you know, Keeping a captain on a six inch gunned cruiser or below, because there are a couple of French cruisers that are actually a five inch gun cruisers or five and a half inch gun cruisers, like Bougainville has 138 millimeter uh, guns. And uh, those ships, if you plan on running a dedicated captain, you're obviously going to want to run IFHE because they predominantly rely upon their HE for damage dealing, and that little bit of extra pen really helps out in the long run. If you're going to be running the, you know, a predominantly heavy cruiser spec captain, uh, IFHE obviously is not going to be necessary because IFHE really only works well with, uh, you know, the six inch gun stuff. Now, Henri. Or, yeah, I, I butchered that. Henri the Fourth. I'm not even going to attempt to say that in, um, in French. But uh, Henry the Fourth. Uh, basically, you're going to be looking at uh, a very different situation because of the caliber of the guns being higher than other cruisers, but not quite battleship levels. Uh, 
it, it, it's an interesting ship because of it. And um, I, whether or not IFHE is of use, I'm going to do some more research. I highly doubt it. Uh, most uh, The only ships that I could see it really being useful on are going to be the higher tier battleships that have 50 or more millimeters of deck armor. And I'm really not sure that that's really necessary uh, to run on that ship. But... Being as they are primarily HE focus, you know, fires are going to be part of your damage dealing capabilities, so demolition expert's not a bad skill to take. You do have pretty good AP, though, so it, it's certainly not something to completely ignore. It's just not as good as the US or German AP is. Now, the obvious French uh, trait is going to be speed boost, and that's not going to come on for your cruisers. And until later on, you, you, you're not going to see that. I think it's tier five, I think, is the first one that gets it. It might be tier six, so don't quote me on that. You're going to have to wait a little bit in order to get the um, speed boost on board a ship for the French cruisers. Now, that's not to say that, you know, you can't, you know, have a, a good time running these ships. They are pretty quick. They are also pretty maneuverable. And that's an, also a nice advantage. So they have a lot of ability to flex across the map and really exert their strengths in that manner. Now, the downside to this is a lot of these cruisers have next to no armor. Uh, Emile Bertin literally has, I think it's 16 millimeters of armor everywhere. Um, yeah, not exact. 13 millimeters. Sorry for the correction there. 13 millimeters of armor on the outside and another 13 millimeters spaced on the inside. Now, these ships do, generally speaking, have spaced armor, which means that shells can kind of disappear into them. AP shells can, not battleship AP, but uh, cruiser AP can kind of disappear into them and uh, not do... A whole lot of damage. In fact, uh, I Chase Gaming has a pretty good video about spaced armor and the really screwy things it does to the game. Um, it, it's it's an interesting video. It's worth watching. And a lot of these cruisers have that, and you will basically have no belt armor for a very very long time. And that's different for some people. It means that basically these ships are better off sailing broadside in some manner than they are sailing, you know, angled because the angled ships are going to end up eating a lot of normal pens, whereas the ships that are broadside, they're going to see a lot of over pens from battleships. Now, I'm not suggesting you actually sail broadside. Please don't do that. You will get deleted, but it, it is interesting that at closer ranges, especially being broadside to a battleship is not an instant death sentence like it would be for other nations' cruisers, especially when we talk about Tier 5 cruisers. That means Omaha, Furutaka. Those ships, basically, if you sail broadside in them ever, you're going to die a very, very painful death. And speaking of very, very painful deaths, I really do enjoy the lower-tier French cruisers for their ability to harass both Phoenix and Omaha. In fact, Phoenix is by far my favorite Tier 4 cruiser, but uh, Emile Bertin definitely is pushing it for my favorite Tier 5 cruiser, and that's because she's so flexible. She can flex across the map. She's got 41 knots of speed. She's got pretty good AA for a Tier 5 cruiser. I mean, she's just littered with 40 millimeter Bofors because modernized by in the U.S. And that makes her a lot of fun to play. And overall, you know, so far my experiences with the French cruisers have been very positive. They also get some pretty awesome torpedo armaments. Um, starting at, I think it's tier four, you get nine kilometer torpedoes on your cruiser. I know for sure Emile Bertin has it at tier five. I just can't remember off the top of my head if, if, uh, the tier four has uh, torpedoes or not that go that far. I know it has torpedoes. They might be 6k. Don't quote me. Or maybe they're 8k. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, Emile Bertin has 9k torps and is reasonably stealthy too. I mean, it, it, it's, you know... 10.8 kilometers with the uh, temp with the 10 point captain on and concealment expert so you don't have any ability to really stealth fire but you do also you know gain some pretty usable torpedoes and they hit reasonably hard they hit hard enough to to really catch the attention of ships but 
total torpedo count is very low. And so using those torpedoes as an offensive weapon, I, you're not going to see too much of it. And in fact, you'll predominantly use them as a deterrent to being chased by battleships and other cruisers. But you also have really high and ridiculous speed to also help with that. And that, I think, is far more important. You've got good maneuverability, good stealth, and lots of speed. And all of those things make for a very, very fun and agile ship. And with that comes the need to play these ships like you are uh, basically being shot at all the time. They, they, the amount of WASD hacks that you need to be employing is astronomical. I mean, you really, really, really need to be WASDing to get the most of these ships. If you don't, you will end up dying fairly quickly. And if you're not sure exactly how much WASD you should be doing, I would strongly recommend watching the battle videos a couple times just to be certain, because it's a lot. Now, obviously in this Bougainville video, I am stationary behind an island and island camping, and that's because this ship, it was garbage when I played it. And I'm not sure that changes to the amount of HE damage are going to fix that, but later on, Especially once you start getting into the tier four, uh, tier three and tier four, Friant is a very good tier three cruiser, and it is very much a ship that needs good mobility, and you have to be on the constant move with it or finding a very, very solid island to hide behind. Um, the tier four is pretty solid too. I'm not going to attempt to butcher that name at this point in time. Uh, we'll save that for another day, but. It's also very good. Now, uh, Emile Bertin is is very maneuverable, and the WASD hacks make it just an absolute riot to play, and it can harass ships like nobody's business. Uh, La Galassonniere, uh, it also is basically an Emile Bertin, just upgraded slightly, and I, I really think that it is also a very, very solid ship. And, uh, you know... I like the line so far. There's not a whole lot of faults that I really have with it, aside from uh, some really kind of frustrating low-tier shenanigans. But beyond that, I would say that the, the line is pretty solid thus far. And I like it. I don't know what else to really say about it. I mean, you're going to see a lot of tactics that are employed by the Japanese cruisers, only it's going to do them a little bit better. And by the time we get to the tier 10, you know, we're going to enjoy those big high caliber cruiser guns. And we are going to translate that into burning all of the things that we see on the map. And that play style is definitely unique and fun. Plus, it's got speed boost. So there's not really any cruisers in the game that can get away from it, let alone destroyers. But it lacks radar. So this, this line does get defensive fire in addition to the speed boost. Um, obviously, defensive fire and hydro are going to occupy the same slot. And as a result, you do not get to use hydro in combination. So no radar means that uh, DDs are going to have to be, you know, basically shooting at you to chase them down and do a whole lot. But cruisers definitely stand a much better chance of catching up to them and taking them out or burning battleships from afar, which is generally speaking the way French cruisers are played. And, uh, you know, I look forward to the history of these ships, too, especially some of the, the light cruisers and the first couple of heavy cruisers, which are actually real ships. Um, they've got some interesting history. You know, we've got the betrayal at Mels al Kabir, where the British sank the French fleet to prevent them from being captured by the Germans. That's a, a pretty interesting um, naval battle, if you want to really call it a naval battle. Uh... I, maybe we'll talk about that in a history video because I think it's worth talking about a little bit and that may make some of my watchers from the UK a little upset but um, overall I I think there's a lot of good history there as well and that to me is very exciting because that's the part of this game that I really enjoy so this battle is almost wrapping up here so I won't hammer on these points any further but Overall, I think you guys are going to like this line, especially if you like the Japanese cruisers. Very similar play style with the HE focus, but a little bit more versatility because they're just more maneuverable overall. 
Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper, and you guys know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.